Welcome to The Conspiracy Show. My name is Richard Serrett. On August 16th, 1977, the undisputed king of rock and roll passed from this earth, found face down in the shag carpeting in the bathroom of his Graceland mansion in Memphis, Tennessee. Almost from the moment news of his supposed death hit the news media, there were those who doubted that he was really dead. Wishful thinking? Simple denial? Tonight, The Conspiracy Show investigates claims and examines new evidence that Elvis not only faked his death, but that he is alive to this day, living in complete anonymity in a secret location. First, a prominent rock and roll investigator lays out the whole Elvis is Alive legend. And then we'll hear from a member of the Elvis underground who claims to have first-hand knowledge that the King is still with us. We'll also meet a retired member of the LA Sheriff's Department who has been investigating reports that Elvis is alive since 1977. And of course, we'll get a skeptical perspective from researchers who remain convinced Elvis has left the building. Me? I'm just like you. I want the truth, and I'm willing to follow the truth wherever it leads. Friends, it is time to redefine reality. Genetic enigma or a human alien hybrid. There was at least two gunmen. One was firing from the nose. Is it possible technology can alter weather patterns? Created by the has been engineered by the Illuminati. There's no doubt. This is the famous RCA Victor Recording Studio here in Nashville. After Elvis's initial recordings with Sun Records, his contract was purchased by RCA, and of course he made some of his most famous recordings right here in this building. I guess the question is, if Elvis faked his death and is still alive today, does he occasionally still show up here to lay down a few tracks? Two weeks before August 16th, Elvis canceled his tour fired half his entourage. Two weeks later, of course, August 16th, was when the shenanigans began. Paul, why are you so convinced that Elvis didn't die August 16th, 1977? Uh, because the bank account statement showed the checks, 20, 30, $40,000 checks to people. And the checks were written at Elvis' bank and signed by Elvis. And that morning, around 9.30, a courier delivered a package that Elvis signed. That piece of paper is still in existence. It just doesn't add up. There's no way possible you can be sitting on the toilet, signing checks, answering the door, and everything else. I remain a skeptic myself. However, I can't ignore some of the things that came up uh, that I can't explain. Right after his death, uh, I, I had a, a another deputy uh, show me some photos, supposedly of Elvis getting into a helicopter with some suited guys with dark glasses. And he told me these this was taken uh, supposedly several hours after uh, Elvis was allegedly dead. You know, that's the mysterious black helicopters, and they were flying over Graceland. conspiracy idea that he was lifted out and maybe a body was taken and, and put in place and one of the great rumors was that Elvis weighed over 250 pounds when he died but on the autopsy report the weight said 170 so the idea of the missing body being exchanged but you know I think that's where the black helicopter comes in but all great conspiracy theories have black helicopters right yes there was a man that fit his exact description that left in a helicopter from the back of Graceland Someone who looked like Elvis, well, I don't know if you've looked at photos from the other people that were living in that house, but a lot of people kind of looked like Elvis who were living in that house, especially if you saw them from a distance. Elvis is someone who uh, traveled by a private jet. He would take helicopters uh, around. He would, there was, it was probably a fairly common occurrence to see a helicopter land at Graceland, even maybe so the day before or the day of, of his death. I recall the story, and it sets up one of the great clues of the wax dummy in the coffin. And a lot of people would look at the body and they'd say, you know, that's not Elvis. It looks like a dummy. It looks like it's made out of wax. The body in the casket. 
looked somewhat waxen. Right. And one mentioned that he had a pug nose. Elvis didn't have a pug nose. His hands were too smooth, and but they would have been calloused because he was into the martial arts. Right. The other thing about it, that a sideburn had fallen off and had to be glued back. One mentioned beads of sweat or condensation. Somewhere between two and 300 people that reported sweat beads. They actually saw beads of perspiration. All adding up to the possibility that the body was in fact made of wax. The Elvis that was in that coffin was Wait. a thin looking yeah, 1950s Elvis. Elvis. The reason the coffin was so heavy is there's an air conditioner that was placed in the bottom of the coffin to help keep the wax dummy cool so that it wouldn't melt. It was about a 900 pound casket. That makes perfect sense. And weren't there well, eight or 12? There was 12 palm bears, bears. yeah. If it was, in fact, a wax Elvis that was inside this coffin, which I don't believe, by the way, but if it was, maybe uh, to avoid what happened to Charlie Chaplin when people dug up the body and tried to make off with it, or maybe people were just sort of imagining things. I mean, there is talk that the pug nose came from Elvis when he, when he died, he fell over, and the idea is that he fell you know, literally, you know, did a face plant into the floor. Some people saw pudgy hands, others didn't. Some people said that he was thin, others said that he had gained 50 pounds. It just sort of gives a shroud of confusion that seems to hang over this whole thing. Of course, if you weren't really dead, you wouldn't want your actual full, correctly spelled name on a tombstone. I mean, who would, right? Elvis was born in Tupelo, Mississippi. He lived in Memphis, but when it came time to make music, he came here, Music City, USA, Nashville. We're going to discuss whether or not it's possible. Elvis Aaron Presley did not, in fact, leave the building. And talk to me about the, um, the controversy surrounding the, the casket, no US flag, the significance of that. Elvis was a veteran, and when Elvis died, a lot of people thought it was odd that Vernon did not have an American flag draped over Elvis's coffin because he did make it to the rank of sergeant. But I'm not too sure how Vernon felt about the government taking Elvis into the army and drafting him because he felt like Elvis was really doing a lot for the United States government money-wise and now they sort of betrayed him and took him into the army. Vernon was never a fan of Elvis being in the army and they didn't have taps played or they didn't have the gun salute. Well, when I spoke to the gentleman who worked at the Memphis Funeral Home at the time, and he said that while a lot of people put flags on their casket, that was never mentioned to Vernon, and it was not offered, nor was it asked for. They had told the, the funeral home, please handle the arrangements, and Vernon, in his condition, was not going to be consulting with them. So they were given pretty much a blank check, do what you think is appropriate, and that's what they did. Um, so where the claim came from that Vernon was, was asked that about the flag and that he refused the flag, I don't know. But the gentleman who worked for the funeral home says that that did not happen. Elvis was superstitious and he didn't want to fake death. So if he's going to fake it, he's not going to give death a chance to come and get him. So you would say, well, I would have a flag on my funeral. Well, since I'm not really dead, let's just put roses. You know, so when I do die, I can do the funeral the way it should be. And that, hence the spelling on the tombstone, everything else. Of course, if you weren't really dead, you wouldn't want your actual full, correctly spelled name on a tombstone. I mean, who would, right? The apparent misspelling of Elvis's middle name, Aaron, on the tombstones, which is significant because when Elvis was born and it was misspelled, spelled with two A's on his birth certificate, apparently Vernon went to great lengths uh, to get that corrected on his birth certificate, and yet on the tombstone it was spelled with two A's. After uh, 1965 or 1966, he had wanted to go to the state of Mississippi and have his name changed. When he found out that it was already changed to the double A, they left it at that, but his father knew that he wanted to make that change. So to say that Vernon misspelled it is not accurate. He knew that Elvis wanted the double A spelling, and that's why it's on the, the gravestone. If Elvis uh, faked his death, what would some of the reasons, uh, what might have been some of the motives for doing that? Okay. Why Elvis would fake his death, the first reason was he was too famous. 
he had to rent whole movie theaters out after midnight so he could bring his friends in and they could watch film. Or when he took his daughter out for a birthday, he had to rent the entire amusement park, close it out, and use it. So that here he was, a prisoner of his own fame at Graceland. That was one. The second one was that Elvis, when he met Richard Nixon and got his special badge for the drug enforcement, that he had turned in some huge drug ring involving the mafia and that they were taking a contract out on his life. So Elvis was put into witness protection. Much has been made that he was a, uh, a federal agent that Richard Nixon made him a federal agent. Well, that simply never happened. Uh, Elvis, uh, who knows in what state of mind, uh, contacted Nixon and said, listen, I, I, I've got contacts all over the music industry. I can help you. I could, I could root out the evil that is drugs. Meanwhile, his clothes are literally rattling with little jars of pills that he has tucked away in all his pockets. And because he's Elvis Presley, he gets to meet the president. Because he's Elvis Presley, he gets more than just a set of cufflinks that all the other VIPs get. Because he's Elvis Presley, he got a badge. And he got a badge that made him something like a special enforcer for the, which was, it doesn't mean, there's no such position. Elvis had apparently taken part in an FBI sting called Project Fountain Pen, which right. sent some mobsters uh, to jail. Uh, because uh, one of Elvis's jets, I believe, had been uh, leased by these mobsters. Vernon was a horrible money manager, and it was the mob that basically extorted money out of Elvis and Vernon, and they got in the plane. And eventually, Frederick Peter Pro, along with the rest of his cronies, were busted and served their time. Regarding Operation Fountain Pen, that was an FBI investigation that was actually quite broad. It didn't focus on Elvis. Elvis was just a part of it. Well, a lot of people don't know about this, and I, I spoke to the gentleman who put Operation Fountain Pen together and was actually working undercover on the, on the case on Elvis's part of it, is that Elvis didn't know about Operation Fountain Pen. Vernon didn't know about Operation Fountain Pen. He was never actually a federal agent, which very likely means he was never involved in an FBI operation to take down anybody. <laughs> I got an anonymous tip that Elvis Presley's credit history was showing up, that someone was searching his credit history for a loan. The Lloyds of London life insurance policy that went uncashed right. uh, after his death, uh, apparently it's not illegal to fake your death, but it is illegal to profit from it. Right. Therefore, the life insurance policy could not be cashed because that would be fraud. Right. Um, if, in fact, they'd ever taken out a life insurance policy with Lloyds of London. I have seen the actual documentation that there is still an active life insurance policy for Elvis Iron Presley. You gotta understand, I work major frauds as a detective, so I'm used to looking at paper trails and understanding why, why, trying to reason why people would do things. So I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking, okay, let's, let's go on the theory, let's say he faked his death. If you call a life insurance policy, that's fraud, if you didn't really die. So that's why that was never touched. But other insurance policies, bank accounts, and everything was drained. You would think that there would be some life insurance. He was a huge star. But Elvis and, and uh, his business dealings, they weren't, uh, he wasn't a very good businessman. And he wasn't being handled by people who were particularly good business people either. So um, it wouldn't surprise me at all if a lot of those sort of details just simply weren't looked after. A month or so prior to that, Elvis took a loan out on Graceland why he would do that when he, he was about to go that, on tour yeah about to go on tour then cancels mm -hmm. the tour the rights checks and xx and twenty thousand dollars plus to doctors close friends and paying stuff people off him. perhaps yeah, basically possibly paying people off i think one of the best things that came up <clears throat> was that i got an anonymous tip that Elvis Presley's credit history was showing up, that someone was searching his credit history for a loan. And the credit history is being run under the name of John Burroughs. John Burroughs was an, 
was an AKA that Elvis often used when he checked into hotels so that people wouldn't know that Elvis Presley was there. Joe Esposito has admitted to him, Yeah, Joe he's probably going to get very admitted. mad over this, but uh, Joe Esposito has admitted to Paul on the phone, on speaker, so I heard it, but he said quite bluntly that Elvis did not die that day. But if you ever tell anybody that, I'll just say you're crazy. If you were to discover Elvis's whereabouts, found out that he was alive and living under a witness relocation program, would you ever reveal that information? No. Nor would I even want to. Why would I put somebody's life in jeopardy to prove someone's conspiracy theory when he's not doing anything but just what he agreed to? Uh, no, I would never do that. Well, so long. Hell, how I hate to see you go. Well, so long, so long, baby. Hell, what about the supposed tape recordings, audio recordings of Elvis Presley made after 1977. What can you tell me about that? I've got one that's been voice printed as Elvis. The Silver Nora album with the Do You Know Who I Am, Loving You, I Love Her Any Night, and so on and so forth have been voice printed and they are exact match to Elvis's voice. I don't know if you've ever been to Collingwood, Ontario for Elvis week, but there's a lot of people who look and sound like Elvis there. I don't know. I don't buy it. I think that, you know, they they are elaborate hoaxes. I think that, you know, it, it, in some ways it's a bit of fun. It is a house that, from all outside appearances, um, not much bigger than this house. Yeah, it's basically ghetto. From what I saw, it looked like Elvis. Tell me about this address, 2901 Columbus Avenue in Fort Worth. It is a house that, from all outside appearances, um, not basically, much bigger than this house. Yeah, it's basically ghetto. We got outside and back, and you can see the full silhouette of a man. He was kind of heavy set. From what I saw, it looked like Elvis. You're saying that 2901 Columbus Avenue in Fort Worth, Texas is where Elvis Presley is currently residing. At least that's what the credit report shows. The last known credit transaction was done at that address. Multiple, and credit, multiple transactions. credit transactions. And, and the prior address to that was 3977 Elvis Presley Boulevard. Graceland. What's some of the other mythology uh, out there that, that suggests that Elvis might be alive that I haven't, that we haven't covered so far? Personal sightings. I remember a time when someone saw him in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Elvis is in Kalamazoo. People come up, I saw this guy, he fixed my car. I had a flat tire and I looked at it and it was Elvis and he changed my tire for me. Or I was in a bar and this guy gets up on stage and, and he was a fabulous singer and he looked just like Elvis, but his hair was gray, so Elvis is alive. You know, in some ways, when someone like this passes away, when Michael Jackson goes, when Kurt Cobain went, uh, you know, even to a lesser extent, Jimi Hendrix and people like that, people want to believe something else. You know, Elvis really changed things on the, on the landscape, not only musically, but you know, sort of as a pop culture figure and he was taken rather suddenly and unexpectedly and of course that leads to conspiracy theories and people wanting him to be alive but um, the only thing that I object to are people who are disingenuous about it people who say well no Elvis calls me or this is a new Elvis record and suck in the fans who really want to believe it who want to believe it's true is there any late breaking evidence that you've received to suggest that Elvis may in fact still be alive <clears throat> As much uh, as I would love to accommodate you with uh, some things that I have uh, learned here just recently and in, in the last year or so, uh, I can't, but I will tell you this, I'll make you this promise. When the time comes that I, that I know for sure uh, what this information, where it leads, your show will be the only show that I'll reveal that information. How's that? For me, Many of the questions raised by the Presley Commission have been resolved. The misspelling of Elvis's middle name, Aaron, on his gravestone, the supposed uncashed life insurance policy, and the missing U.S. flag on his casket. 
all have reasonable explanations. And the theory that a wax dummy was placed in the casket to fool mourners is interesting. But of the thousands of people who filed past Elvis's body, only two commented that it didn't look like Elvis. And what about Elvis's motive for faking his death? That he feared for his life if he testified against several mobsters in an FBI sting called Project Fountain Pen? Our skeptic has pretty much dismantled that. The recordings supposedly made by Elvis post-1977, well, most of us now know they were performed by the late Elvis impersonator Jimmy Ellis. The picture of Muhammad Ali posing outside a New York hospital with Jesse Jackson and someone who admittedly looks like Elvis, well, we now know that individual was a man named Larry Kolb, who worked as Ali's bodyguard. What's left are countless supposed Elvis sightings around the United States. The sad truth is that in any crowd of, say, 1,000 people, you could probably find someone with a resemblance to Elvis. Finally, if Elvis faked his death in 1977 and truly wanted to remain out of the public eye, would he be posing for newspaper photos with Muhammad Ali? Would he be recording music and releasing it on the internet? Not likely. I've been following this story for years, and I have to admit, for a time, I thought there was a chance Elvis might still be alive. But now, in the absence of any convincing evidence, I am finally ready to admit, the king is gone. Long live the king. And now, I'd like to know what you think. You can contact us here at The Conspiracy Show through our website, www.theconspiracyshow.com. In the meantime, don't be afraid.